Now when we had parted from them and had set sail, we came by a straight course to Kos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there, to Patera, and having found a ship crossing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. And when we came in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we kept sailing to Syria and landed at Tyre, for there, the ship was to unload its cargo. And after looking up the disciples, we stayed there seven days, and they kept telling Paul through the Spirit not to set foot in Jerusalem. And when our days there were ended, we left and started on our journey, while they all, with wives and children, escorted us until we were out of the city. After kneeling down on the beach and praying, we said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship, and they returned home again. And when we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemy, and after greeting the brothers, we stayed with them for a day. And on the next day we left and came to Caesarea, and entering the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, we stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. And as we were staying there for some days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet in hands, and said, This is what the Holy Spirit says, In this way the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we had heard this, we as well as the local residents began begging him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, crying and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but even to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we fell silent, saying, The will of the Lord be done. Now after these days we got ready and started on our way up to Jerusalem. And some of the disciples from Caesarea also came with us, taking us to Nason of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we were to lodge. And after we arrived in Jerusalem, the brothers welcomed us gladly. And the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. And after he had greeted them, he began to relate one by one the things which God did among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they began glorifying God, and they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed, and they are all zealous for the law, and they have been told about you, that you are teaching all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children nor to walk according to the customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Therefore do this that we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take them and purify yourself along with them, and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. Then all will know that there is nothing to the things which they have been told about you, but that you yourself also walk orderly, keeping the law. But concerning the Gentiles who have believed, we wrote, having decided that they should keep from meat sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what is strangled, and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took them in, and the next day, purifying himself along with them, went into the temple, giving notice of the completion of the days of purification, until the sacrifice was offered for each one of them. Now when the seven days were almost over, the Jews from Asia, upon noticing him in the temple, began to throw all the crowd into confusion and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches to everyone everywhere against our people and the law and this place, and besides, he has even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian in the city with him, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was stirred, and the people rushed together, and taking hold of Paul they dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. While they were seeking to kill him, a report came up to the commander of the Roman cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. At once, he took along soldiers and centurions and ran down to them, and when they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander came up and took hold of him and ordered him to be bound with two chains, and he began asking who he was and what he had done. But among the crowd, some were shouting one thing and some another, and when he could not find out the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. And when he got to the stairs, he actually was carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd, for the multitude of the people kept following them, shouting, Away with him! As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the commander, May I say something to you? 
And he said, Do you know Greek? Then you are not the Egyptian who some time ago raised a revolt and led the four thousand men of the assassins out into the wilderness? But Paul said, I am a Jew of Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no insignificant city, and I beg you, allow me to speak to the people. And when he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the stairs, motioned to the people with his hand, and when there was a great hush, he spoke to them in the Hebrew language, saying, 